B2B marketing strategy permanently changed during the pandemic. A few weeks back, I was asked by a reporter for my insight on what has changed with go-to-market strategy, digital marketing, and sales enablement during the lockdowns and what is to be expected moving forward. Now, for example, she wanted to know what was some of the new ways of communicating with customers. So when it comes to customer communication before the pandemic, our team had already used video conferencing and online events and webinars going all the way back to around 2008 to communicate with prospects and clients. Pre-pandemic, about 50% of the time, we were finding video reluctant clients that we'd work with that were uncomfortable with being on camera with video meetings and would resist even turning on their webcams. Now more than 90% of our clients are very comfortable with having their webcam on during meetings, during webinars, and this helps tremendously with building rapport and improving collaboration. Along the same lines, clients also became way more comfortable with creating their own video content. A common phenomenon I would see a couple of years ago is clients, whenever I broached the subject of video, they'd be like, oh, isn't that going to be several thousand dollars to go bring in a professional videographer and we're going to have to do lots of takes and we're going to have to coach and do storyboards and sets and it's going to take several weeks? And like, yeah. However, more than likely, the issue is that there may be one or two videos that are high profile on your own page or on social media that you really put those kinds of resources in. The reality, though, is we need to provide helpful educational content. We need to have more voices in your company be able to get in front of the camera, and we need to be able to record, produce, and get that stuff out quickly in much larger quantities. So the good part is during um, the period, the resiliency that we've had to build up is people have generally gotten way more comfortable with producing a lot of B plus and A minus video and don't feel the need to take three to six months anymore to get their perception of what an A plus is and will emphasize their perception because until we ship our products, until we get feedback from the marketplace and we see if the video asset actually helped improve the goals, it's just our opinion, right? Um, so another area that this reporter was curious about is if I discovered new tactics for reaching people during this time. And yes, yes. Um, another finding during the pandemic um, as well was our, before that our clients were very, very concentrated in a single time zone. Like I'm being most of my team are based on the East Coast of the US. So we sometimes worked with clients that were in central time but a lot less common that we work with clients that were on mountain time and Pacific time. It did happen maybe 10, 20% of the time, but it wasn't the rule. Now, as companies became more comfortable with remote teams, a lot of that changed in a hurry during the pandemic. Um, and clients became way more comfortable with scheduling and calendar optimization, meaning that they were more comfortable reaching and working across multiple time zones, both for their own client base as well as other people on their team. And interestingly enough, we also reached and worked with a lot of clients outside of the US during this time period that in many cases were five, six, seven hours ahead. And again, as people became way more comfortable with all things virtual, a lot of this perception in their mind that they needed people that can sit in their office where they could hover over their shoulder and micromanage, a lot of that went completely out the window because once you're not within a half hour drive, what does it matter whether you're two hours away or a plane ride away as long as you're collaborating efficiently to help solve business goals. Another area we talked about was techniques that may have worked better than we thought they would that were surprisingly big wins in here. And yeah, we found two interesting marketing techniques work better than we thought they would. First, we already knew the strong momentum that we were seeing pre-pandemic around the trend towards self-servicing and making purchase decisions before people were comfortable speaking with someone from a sales team. You know, there's this general finding starting with serious decisions in Salesforce and Forrester going back the better part of 10 years we're on, on B2B technology or just be considered B2B cycles. It was very common to find that people were 60% or more of the way through the research and decision making process before they were open to speaking with someone from your sales team. And in a large degree that's accelerated 
even beyond that and the building out and investing in these digital first journeys have become even more effective than they were pre-pandemic because it's been even more difficult to be able to pick up the phone and call someone in their office and where's the office? Do people still have landline phones? Are people forwarding calls? Do they really want to be? And then there's people that needed a lot more scheduling flexibility because they were home and conforming to their family schedules with kids schooling and other creative ways of being able to get work done. So that tended to be the self-serving and the frictionless sales tended to be way more effective than even anticipated. A second, breaking these large considered purchase decisions down into smaller steps with um, incrementally increasing investments and commitments along the way definitely was a huge win for accelerating sales cycles and increased client satisfaction way, way more than could have been anticipated. Another area we talked about is adjustments that were made during the lockdown to how we measure success. And yes, the, during the pandemic, we had and a number of clients had ambitious plans for building more marketing sourced sales pipeline, getting more deals, using self-sponsored, highly targeted offline events, you know, golf tournaments, lunch and learns, fancy dinners, more traditional kinds of targeted niche conferences. And all those plans generally needed to be shifted very, very quickly from offline investments to their digital equivalents. And most of them tend to work really anywhere from really well to working great. In a lot of cases, by driving cost and complexity out, they were able to lower the barriers to entry and get a lot more people actively participating and engaging, which was a net win for building marketing source pipeline, getting more people curious about what the products and services were all about and advancing into to new clients and new revenue sources. Finally, the question came up about where and how work was actually getting done. And probably for most people, that's the least interesting part of how marketing, B2B marketing strategy changed during the pandemic. But before the pandemic, I personally was very comfortable with hybrid work where you're combining time in the office and working remotely part of the time. During the pandemic, that for most people that could, that shifted to fully remote teams. My working routine, my typical workday, um, really didn't change much in that scenario. However, I became a lot more deliberate about having large blocks of time, multiple days a week dedicated to deep work that were completely interruption free. Like I wasn't accepting meetings. I wasn't, I wasn't manually booking meetings. I wasn't accepting uh, self book meetings rather than allowing meetings, workshops to be slotted indiscriminately throughout the week, sprinkled like almost like a defrag that you'd look at on your hard drive or like a piece of Swiss cheese where there's little holes here and there and not enough to actually make a dent on, on major projects. Without blocking out large swaths of time, and for non-meeting days, non-meeting time slots, it's hard to make a lot of momentum on major initiatives that are focused on digital marketing, digital transformation, sales enablement, and, and content strategy. So that was something that was just reinforced in a big time way during the pandemic. Those are my thoughts on how B2B marketing strategy has changed for me personally, for my team, for the kind of companies that I work with during the pandemic, and some of the lessons that we learned that you can apply in your own company to grow your visibility, to grow your lead generation, your sales opportunities, your client base, and your revenue. I'm Joshua Feinberg from SP Home Run, and I would love to know how your B2B marketing strategy changed during the pandemic. Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one assistance with this, feel free to look me up on LinkedIn, send me a little message, connect with me, and we can set up a time to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Look forward to hearing your success story with how you're reinventing and transforming your B2B marketing. Hey there, it's Joshua Feinberg from SP Home Run, and we are so glad that you stopped by to watch this video today. If you got good value from its content, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell so that you can be notified when new videos just like this become available. Hope you're having a great day, and we wish you great success.